Okay? Uh, what we're going to be doing in this lesson is looking at the standard form of a quadratic function. And what the standard form of a quadratic function is, is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And a is not allowed to be 0, can't equal 0. Uh, what we are going to be doing is looking at a few different functions, creating a table of values, and see if we notice any impact of the values of a, b, and c on the function and any patterns we might notice. Uh, so in this first example, what we're asked to do is for these two functions, create a table of values, and then graph the function, determine the coordinates of the vertex, and the x-intercepts and y-intercept. Uh, in this particular first function, uh, I'm choosing to have input values from negative 3 to positive 3, and the function is f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. So if I input negative 3 into the function, I will get an output of 9 plus 6 minus 3, which is 12. Okay. Uh, if I input negative 2 into the function, I will get an output of 4 plus 4 minus 3, which is 5. If I input negative 1 into the function, uh, I will get an output value of 0. If I input 0 into the function, I will get an output value of negative 3. If I input 1 into the function, I'll get an output value of negative 4. And then we'll get remaining output values of negative 3, 0, and you can assume after graphing these points, I won't graph negative 3 and 12, uh, but negative 2, 5, negative 1, 0, uh, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, oops, sorry, 2, negative 3, and 3, 0. You can also assume that there would be a point up here. So here is our function. Okay. Uh, for this particular function, we have a vertex of 1, negative 4, and we have a y-intercept of 0, negative 3, a, an x-intercept of negative 1, 0, and another x-intercept of 3, 0. Uh, on to the next function. If I use the same input values for the next function, I will get output values of negative uh, 9 plus 6 plus 8, which is 5. Uh, on to the next one, we would have an output value of Eight. Uh, the next output value would be 9, the next output value would be 8, the next output value, uh, so on and so on, in this case would be 5, and then we get output values of 0, then negative 7. Uh, if I graph these points, what we will see, negative 3, 5, negative 2, 8, negative 1, 9, 0, 8, 1, 5, 2, 0, and I won't fit negative 3, or 3, negative 7 on there, but I could assume by symmetry that there's a point there as well. Uh, we'll notice that our vertex is at 1, negative 9, and that our <clears throat> x-intercepts are at 2, 0, and negative 4, 0, and our y-intercept is at 0 and 8. Now, a few observations that we can make based on these two quadratic functions, their tables of values, and other things. Uh, the first two are from the value of a. Given that the value of a for the first function is positive 1, and the value of a for the second function is negative 1, uh, we can assume that positive a values have a function opening up. So if a is greater than 0, uh, it opens up. Uh, conversely, for the second example, if a is negative, what happens is that the graph opens down. 
Uh, as far as C is concerned, what we'll notice is that C always represents the y-intercept because with an input of 0, the only remaining term will be the constant. So C is always equal to the y-intercept. The other observation that we can make here, uh, and it's done in the textbook, uh, what they do is in comparing the vertex form of a function to the standard form and going from the vertex form to the standard form, uh, you can follow it here and pause it if you'd like, but what they do is find out that P, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex, is equal to negative B over 2A. So what that means, uh, I'm just going to delete this for a second, what that means is that the x-coordinate of the vertex, and I'll show you the example in just a second, is always equal to, if your function's in standard form, is always equal to negative b over t, 2a. So that is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So for example, if we look at the two examples here, uh, you'll see that the, for example, number one, if we calculate negative b over 2a, the value of b is negative 2 and a is equal to 1. We have negative, negative 2 over 2 times 1. That gives us a value of 1, which is equivalent to the x-coordinate of the vertex. Same thing for the second example. If we calculate negative b over 2a, uh, the value of b is negative 2 and a is negative 1. We'll have negative, negative 2 over 2 times negative 1. That gives us a value of negative 1. That is equivalent to the x-coordinate. This should be negative 1 of the vertex. Those are the patterns we know in uh, standard form. So in looking at two examples without tables of values, we can start to make some predictions. Uh, without a table of values, predict the following, the direction of opening. Uh, the direction of opening from this first function uh, will be down because a is negative as far as our y-intercept is concerned. Our y-intercept would be 5 and our uh, coordinates of the vertex, well we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex would be negative b over 2a which gets us negative, negative 8 over 2 times negative 2 would give us a value of 8 over negative 4, which is negative 2. In order to come up with the y-coordinate of the vertex, what we need to do is substitute the value of x for our vertex into the function, and we'll get our output. So the y-coordinate is negative 2 times negative 2 squared minus 8x plus 5, or sorry, minus 8 times negative 2 plus 5. So that would be negative 2 times 4 plus 16 plus 5, which is going to be negative 8 plus 21, which is 13. So our vertex has coordinates of negative 2 and 13. So we can make lots of predictions as long as our function is in standard form. For the second example, as long as we can represent it in standard form, we can do the exact same thing. I'm not going to complete it completely but the standard form would be f of x is equal to x squared plus 12x, and c in this case would be 0. So we could do the same, uh, same thing for this example to find out the direction of opening, y-intercept, and coordinates of the vertex.